you know, yeah, we got to start songs. Yeah, we got to finish songs. Yeah, we got to sound design. Yeah, we got to watch tutorials. There can be so many parts of being a music producer that it can be very hectic. Check in the SoundCloud inbox this week. Uh, saw the homie K Fish uh, put put up a question for us in our inbox. Um, he said he'd love it if we could talk in more detail about how we organize our time on a daily and weekly basis. Specifically, how do we balance making new stuff versus finishing tracks and doing tangential things such as sound design, watching tutorials, etc. He's been trying to commit to doing a few timer beats every week, but still trying to find the right balance so he's also actually finishing tracks and learning new stuff. Which one, which one of you told K-Fish what we'd be talking about today? <laughs> uh, Shout out K-Fish for the most relevant question that we didn't know what we were talking about yet ever. For real. Uh, yeah, for real. Okay, so let's, let's, let's start from the easy stuff. So the tangential things, uh, sound design, making melodies, working on building yourself racks or patches. That's all of the stuff that you do after dinner, but before you go to bed, when you're able to wrangle your ape away from watching Netflix or any of the other things that feel like would be easier to do before you go to bed, take that hour, take that 30 minutes, whatever it is, while you're brushing your teeth, make a serum preset. And eh, you might get some toothpaste all over yourself if you're doing it for that long. It takes me about like 10 or 15 to make a good preset. Anyways, the things that you do at night when you don't have a plethora of time, whether it be an hour, two hours, 30 minutes, 10 minutes, that's when you make presets. That's when you make racks. Some of my favorite things that I've ever made that inspired songs were like a preset that I made on a Friday night and I sat down Saturday and I wrote a song or a chord progression that I wrote Friday night in 10 minutes. And I was like, Oh my God, I have to write a whole song out of this tomorrow. Um, but those are the types of things that you want to do at night. Now, when you have, you know, maybe between two and four hours or one to two hours, that's when I would say work on finishing music, you know, take that, take that chunk of time that isn't so short that you want to be able to just finish a quick thing. You want to be able to get into the flow of like, what's the bigger picture of this mix, make sure that, you know, all the decisions that I'm making are coherent and so that's, I think, kind of things I like to do when I have like, you know, between one and four hours. If you got more than four hours, turn your phone off if you can. <laughs> Just turn, your, it. Phone. turn yeah. your goddamn phone off. Turn your notifications off. Unplug your Wi-Fi. Like, legit unplug that shit. Yeah, I don't want any distractions for you. And take that four plus hours of time and write new music. Um, what do you guys Love think? Love it. Man, I think uh, one good thing to to add to that, like, you know, absolutely those shorter sessions, you know, Ill Gates in the Ill Methodology that we referenced earlier uh, speaks on having those daytime and nighttime sessions. Like you got all day, write some new shit. You got a few hours at night between dinner and bedtime, like do little things, those sound design sessions, making mud pies, making instrument racks, building, you know, building the tools that will help you move faster on writing day, uh, watching tutorials and taking notes. But within that, I feel that for me, something that works really well is to have like a focus for the season and not necessarily like a three month season, but like, you know, right now I feel one of my weak points that I really want to shore up is sound design. So for the next month, I'm really going to focus on making serum patches over and over and watching tutorials about making serum patches. And I'm, that's going to be my main thing. And yes, some of the time I'm going to do a mud pie out of that serum patch. And some of the time I'm not, and some of the time I'm also going to be writing new songs, but my main thing I'm going to focus on is serum patches. And, you know, for me this year, I've had a couple where, you know, one of my main things was going and using my new mixing techniques and template to go back to songs I really liked that I wrote, you know, a year or two ago that the mix wasn't that good on. And so I was really focused on, let me just shore up 
old songs into newer sounding songs. And I spent like a month and a half really focused on that. And there's been other times this week where it's like, okay, I really want to focus on learning video editing skills. So let me just get as many excuses as possible to get into Premiere Pro this week, this month, to make sure that I move that thing forward a significant chunk of skill level, uh, have a significant amount of level ups with this one thing. Because just like with anything, if you're, if you're spreading yourself too thin and trying to go in too many directions at once, none of those are going to make any significant process and it can get discouraging or progress part of me. And the process can get discouraging if nothing makes progress. So, you know, yeah, we got to start songs. Yeah, we got to finish songs. Yeah, we got to sound design. Yeah, we got to watch tutorials. There can be so many parts of being a music producer that it can be very hectic and and bog you down so just choosing like okay there's a million things i can do to be better at being a producer this month i'm focused on these two and i'll write a few songs i love that you mentioned like separating that further into individual focuses for each of those areas because that's like how i got good at sound design was literally a, a year where like if i had 15 minutes i didn't do anything else but make a serum preset like what that 15 minutes, if I had 15 minutes of time before bed, anytime I had 15 minutes, it was make a serum preset. I had to make at least one a day. It's like my 10 minutes a day was just making serum presets. Um, you know, the same thing with like writing chords or like anything like that. Like it does really help to kind of try and focus that time a little bit more specifically. It is good to note though, that even knowing all of this, I still for sure have more unfinished songs that I know need to be finished than I do have willpower to finish them on a day where I have enough time to maybe finish two of them. I'm going to sit down and write something new. Yeah, It's still a work in progress on how to get that timing dialed in. And I know for a fact that I need to take one of these Saturdays that I set aside for writing sometime in the near future and just try and hammer out the finishing details on three tracks or something like that. But man, it is hard. Um, so don't feel bad if you don't have a perfect yet. It's going to take some time. Even all of us are still working on it. What's perfect even, man. You know, yeah. every I'm sure the, the biggest, most successful dudes and ladies in our industry are sitting there thinking like, man, but if I could only be 10% more productive, though, <laughs> if I that's could the only focus, you got to have arguably, I think that's what keeps you striving for better. And I think being able to separate that, there's something like Dylan said, it was maybe in the mil, Ill, Ill methodology. But that idea of like shutting off your phone, unplugging your internet, I love that, Evan, I think is very powerful because you have to come to terms with the fact that you already have everything within you that you need to make a great song right now without that next tutorial, without that next serum preset, but you can increase your chances of actually getting all of those variables right in a pleasing way the more you know that being said i think all of these different aspects of production like sound design or even arrangement like in the pop world especially you have like multiple people in a room to collaborate on lyrics and arrangement and sound design and all these things and realizing that in the professional ranks there are people that specialize in just one aspect of the process. And so really being honest with yourself and asking yourself, am I interested in actually becoming like a creative artist or do I want to be a sound designer and be mainly a sound designer for either music or for movies or for whatever, whatever, or am I more interested in this aspect or that and making that your priority? I would say though, if you feel inspiration to write, Shut everything else out. You don't need resources. If that inspiration comes, if you're in a sound design binge, whatever, follow that through and see where it takes you. But like you guys said, having one focus at a time, I talked earlier when, when 
you push in one direction, things go exponentially. Don't do sound design one day and drums the next and arrangement the next. Like pick a topic and you will exponentially increase at that the longer the amount of time you put into it because you could spread sound design over the course of a year and not learn much or you could condense it into like three months and become really fucking good at it. And that doesn't mean there isn't room to improve from there because always, always, but you're going to make so much progress in those three months that you will then have a very solid foundation to figure out what other nuances you should explore within that domain. And so we've talked about batching tasks before. Super, super powerful. I would, like you guys said, don't get overwhelmed. Um, J fish, right? K fish. K fish. Sorry, my man. K fish. Don't get overwhelmed, man. We're still going through the exact same stuff. The more, the deeper you get into this, the more nuanced you learn how, the more you learn how nuanced things are. And so really focusing on those tasks. I would also say if you're doing timers for specific things, like you want to learn how to make buildups better or better hooks or better drums or whatever, run these timers and save what you can to your temp template library or think of a methodical sort of sequence to put up in your noggin as far as workflow those three are the holy trinity i would say template library workflow there's nothing wrong with having two methodical ways to make hooks or buildups or whatever and as you expand on your very linear methodical approaches you will then know five ways to make an intro and four ways to make a verse. And then they will sort of muddle up together and you'll start finding ways to like combine and like twist these linear paths into each other. You want to make sure that you have some sort of linear process that you can get yourself into flow state with. And over time, your subconscious will find ways to twist and mangle these various methods to the point where it just becomes a pool of inspiration rather than linear paths. You will have this pool of inspiration you can just reach into and find some sort of combination of those four ways to make an intro and three ways to make a verse and seven ways to not even two ways to make a hook and whatever. You quickly realize that there are so many combinations in which you could apply those very methodical approaches to. And there's so many variables within that, that I would just say, even if you have one way to do everything, watch a tutorial, write out a list, make it into a timer, rinse, repeat. As you get faster at it, you'll free up more mental RAM and you can start adding little steps. Maybe your drums go from kick, snare, hi-hats, crash to Now you can do those four in like a couple minutes, a fraction of the time it used to take you. And now you can start incorporating things into your timer, like reverse swooshes and textures and articulations and certain hits and velocity stuff. And you'll find more niche aspects of like what you can incorporate into those smaller components of your song. And they'll just get more detailed from there. And, um, yeah, I could go on about that all yeah, day, but man. that's the gist of it. <laughs> Workflow oh. library template. Find a way to incorporate your timers into one of those three. Shout out Kfish for asking such a good question that you got all of us going seriously rabbit hole deep to answer it because <laughs> we're already talking about it. Yeah, man. And, yeah. you know, so one thing I'm loving about what you're saying here, like the, the library organization, having the templates, having these processes. One thing I've, I've been, it keeps coming up in my sessions uh, this month. I've been telling people like, okay, yeah, you know, you're worried about how many songs you're building, but I want you to stop that right now. Stop worrying about how many songs you finished or what a finished song even means I want you to build these two machines that are going to help you. You're going to need a song starting machine and a song finishing machine. 
The song Starting Machine is a well-organized library, a whole bunch of racks that you've made where you went through that library and you decided that you could, you know, like these eight kicks and these eight snares are absolutely killer and I'm going to put them on a rack and save it as like awesome kicks and snares and then do that with hi-hats and then put your favorite 808s on samplers so you can play them on the keyboard. And these things will all now be drag and drop and they will save you so much time searching for sounds when you're in the middle of a writing process. And you can drag and drop those sounds all together and save that as a song starting template in your DAW. Like you now you open this one session and it's got every sound you could possibly need to start a song Plus, you have a very well-organized set of folders in your library that have all the sounds that you would need to like, oh, well, where are my downlifters? Oh, they're all in this folder. And I can just click through them until I find one that I like the sound of that fits this drop. And then build your song finishing machine, like using, you know, using some sort of busing template, like the Skrillex, you know, busing template we talk about, or something that is your process for getting through a mix as best as you know how to get the best results, you know how in the least amount of time. And then, like you said, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, make the shitty songs. Even if you don't think this is the best idea, start at, with that song, go through the song starting machine with that idea, run it through all the way through the arrangement, put that into your song finishing machine, run it through your buses and your limiters and everything that you best know how and get the best thing you can today and then move on and run that a lot of times because it doesn't matter. Like if you can finish the best song in a million hours, it doesn't matter. You don't have time for a follow-up song. Like it's better to make a hundred songs and then figure out which five of them you care about enough to go back to. Now that you've run a hundred songs through the song finishing machine, you've learned so much that you can jump back in and be like, okay, now I actually know how to finish this song from 75 songs ago. I love that you said machine because that is exactly how I think of it. Like a machine or a framework or something consistent that will always get me 90% of the way there. And there are variables, of course, for every song that are going to slightly switch up the inner workings of that machine. But when you get to that point where you have that methodical process, I feel like people are hesitant to, to make their approach very methodical. But the, the thing is, when you have that, when you know you could start a song tonight, well, it's COVID times now, but... It feels good to know if I had a show tonight, I could start something right now and get it to a playable state where it'll bang on a system and it'll, I can replicate that consistently every single time. I can get something to CD quality or Spotify quality every single time. Now, now you're truly creative because you have this framework to work within and you just input your ideas into and you know it'll be mixed right you know that the ideas of the song will come through clearly and so you can ignore all of the nerdy technical producer stuff and you can actually just fully be a creative in the moment yeah luke i like that you mentioned also like smaller batches of things um like tesco i like I like the the concept of the machine like you highlighted as well that Luke talked about. Um, but one of the things that I've really been focusing on lately is like rather than use a, a 128, which is a very powerful tool to have a bunch of samples at your disposal. Instead, I'm going to take like my eight, for example, favorite recent sounds that I've been using. And like use those as my starting place for like what I'm going to use in the drop. You know, if I just made this sound and it worked in this other work in progress, but I think it could be used better or whatever, like even just throw the same sound in there and change it a little bit. Like if you're constantly working with your small, absolute best of best of favorites, 
and iterating on those, I always feel like that lands me in like my next favorite bass sound or whatever. Um, sometimes I feel like if I just have a giant list of presets, like I know in the back of my head, there's some that I love, some that I don't love. It's the same thing with 128. If I make 128 of kicks, I know that sample 48 I love. And I know that sample 51 is kind of, eh, okay, I've never used that one. You know, like having a smaller batch of like my best of best of, at least for me, is more inspiring to work with because then I'm, you know, continuing to iterate on the best of the best of rather than taking that okay thing and spending the same time that I would make something amazing into something ridiculous, spending that same amount of time making something that was good into something great, right? Like it's way more inspiring for me to work with a smaller batch of things and continue to push those forward, you know? I like it. What's up, humans? It's Luke, your friendly neighborhood trap Jesus. Thank you so much for watching our videos. We appreciate you. Remember to like and subscribe to our channels. And if you have any questions or topics that we need to cover on the show, put them in the comments. Appreciate you. Peace and peace among worlds.